Hi guys, welcome back to another video. You're kind of coming in mid stride here. Today we have a 2010 Audi A3, and what's actually happening with it is the steering lock has seized and won't turn. I can get it to turn a millimeter or two, which is just enough to make the steering lock release to move it, which is lucky. But um, what I'm seeing at this point in time is I've been handed a, a switch by the customer to go into it. But what I'm seeing is that there's steering angle sensors and all this stuff that's on the bottom of the light switch. So I, ca I can't get out the lock without taking off some of this apparatus. apparatus. So what I'm gonna show is how to get this out or go step by step and try and see what we're up against. The first thing that I have done, I have, have done already, is I have disconnected the airbag. I also took the shear bolts out of the top of the actual ignition switch itself. But I suppose what I'm hoping to show you is the disassembly and reassembly of this piece here in order to get in at the ignition switch. What I have done, if it's of any pointers to anyone, I pulled down this bit of plastic, which is only popped off the side cover and there's three bolts, one on the bottom, one on the top here, and one on the bottom over here. That was that down. And then there was four 13 bolts holding in the steering column itself, okay? So it one, two, and the same on the opposite side of the steering column, which is quite easy. Once I got it down then, like that, I'm just using a quite simple little dot punch. And I'm going, if I can show, from here, or I have gone from here in with the punch. Because I took the four bolts out of the column, the steering column has dropped down a bit, just to give me a little bit of room so I could swing. But I want to try and show you these shear bolts, maybe if I can. I'm going to go down somewhere. Right, I don't see it. I do have one. Okay. Shear bolts basically is the top shears off them and it's only a round bolt that you can't open and as in you can't get a socket on it like that bolt. That's a steering column bolt but you can't get a socket on it. What I do is I go in, you can actually see it there with a punch that dot punch and I start tapping. You can probably see where the, the marks or the damage is. I start tapping here in order to turn this anti-clockwise. Once it turns a turner, so you'll nearly get them out with your fingers or even run the punch around the circle on top of it and it uh, rolls it out. What I found here on one of the bolts here that I couldn't get in at was, this mightn't be a, a very good way of showing it. I had a 20 Torx or T20 Torx and I ran it down by the side, wedged it up against, so, and I turned this, which turned the bolt. You probably, you won't be able to see it now, but in theory, once I was turning it, the bolt turned kind of like that, in a sense. But anyway, that was how I got my shear bolts out. Now what I'm gonna do, at this point in time, I'm taking off my airbag and my steering wheel. I'm going to make sure that the steering wheel is straight, that the wheels, are straight and then I'm not going to turn that steering column good bad or indifferent sometimes there can be little dot punch marks which maybe I can show of where it comes off and you can put these dot punch marks lining up again when you're reassembling but anyway that's so fair but because that's a little bit awkward and contrary you know have done these before but not fresh in my head a good while ago getting becoming an older model of wagon so I'm I'm just going to show this because it's not I'm not familiar with it at this point in time I'm going in to try and figure out how it comes apart and how I change my ignition switch one of the things that I did they did I did have shown or have seen is the switch that she has brought me came with a very Volkswagen looking key the switch is marked Audi but it is a very Volkswagen-y looking key on it now, immobilizer and stuff, what I have done, I'm trying to use our own top of our own key, but that blade, I have gotten one of these blades cut, cost 20 euros, and that new blade that was cut to suit this lock is now in that key, okay? 
so her original key just with a new blade to turn the ignition switch now we'll go ahead and get this crack off okay okay just the airbag what i used was a 27 torx to get in at it that's what i use used it's not the correct one it is a size i think it's size five allen key but when i'm pulling out the airbag that is an orange tab that's on tap on top once you pull that back or flick it back with your fingers the airbag comes out and that's the wiring part of it oh the next venture bit always be careful with airbags people do say it's totally up to your own self they say to disconnect battery and make sure that everything is dead in the car is shut down got into sleep mode um, for me you can see a little light illuminate for me i've never had any issue with them that's not saying that one day i won't get caught and i won't one of them won't shoot off and go up my face but potentially if you're taking out the, the shear bolts with a hammer and a punch um, disconnect the battery just to be sure I haven't but just watch it now we're going to pull out this let's see it's a spline key don't know what size it is yet but we'll get a spline key and get it out of it okay guys can you see it there's a very small nick two little nicks maybe a bit of a light on and it's very very small okay that's just to line up the steering wheel the steering wheel will come off at that point in time now we're into the electronic -y. So Okay, once I have them shear bolts out, which I have at the top, it looks like this whole thing is nearly going to slide up to me. Be very, very careful that that doesn't start turning any of the clock spring. Clock spring, steering column, and all that has to stay in its specific place. For me, I'm just going to slide it off. I'm going to be careful and put it back on in the same place. It isn't going to store on me. Ye do the same, or if you have any doubts at all, maybe put a bit of tape around or some little thing, you know, like a little maybe tie clip in here to tie clip this piece to it. Sometimes they kind of lock. There is no lock to locking device on this anyway. It's, it's turning relatively easy. So, um, yeah, just be careful with that. Okay, two block connectors. This little leg here. This little large leg pulls back, and once that pulls back, that block connector comes out. In here, there's a little second block connector in here with a little red tab on it. I just took a screwdriver in it, red tab pop, pops back and when it, when it, once it did, I could get in at the lock and tab inside and then that lock connector is out. I also have, you can see in here, this looks like it's darting to, to come up um, from this. Okay, I'm gonna keep wiggling. I'm gonna go second, with my second hand and see what I'm stuck on. Okay guys, the steering column switch they're not coming up in one piece for me so i'm going to take off the actual it's kind of part of the steering angle sensor or the steering electronics on the bottom um there's a little sitting in here at the front just there there's a little size eight torx sorry focus camera i should do it size eight torx and then what I had a job doing, there's a little clip, there's actually a clip right in the middle of it, and then there's one at the back. But the one right in the middle, you have to go in just below where the bolt hole is with something now that I didn't have, and this is a really sh terrible, bad <laughs> advertisement or a skirt ever. But that was the smallest little shaft that I could get that would fit in there. A little open hole here. In they go, I had to do a little bit of forcing on it to get in, but that goes in and it pops out the clip that's in the middle, okay? So I have the, that one that's coming out, and once I have that one out, I'm hoping that I will probably get the back one to pop down and pop off relatively, I'm hoping, relatively easy with a bit of a wiggle or a twist. Maybe I might have to get in there with a, with um. Okay, wait a minute, I can see. I think I can see in, see in there now, from the bottom. So I took out the bolt on the front. Let's see, I think, I think I'm kind of in, in there, I believe. It's not the easiest now. Good enough, but I think I'm gonna go again and drop the camera and try and go. I can actually kind of see 
is in there if you can see what I'm looking at okay but at last the clip has to come off I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the camera I'll show you once I get it off okay okay I got him off okay just to show you the clips that came off on this as I said even this air one screw there wasn't small enough to get in but it went in through that little hole on the front and then it caught on that locking device there and pushed it back on the back then once I got a bit of room and I was able to see in I went in with my screwdriver um, I was able to pop out that tab like that okay I couldn't see it from the back anyway, that's that section off and that's nearly I suppose enough I'm hoping that my switch will just about come down now in a second hopefully something holding it here but there is wiggle again or have a look and see okay, guys to drop the ignition switch off there's a little tab just up and in there so all they do is pop in that tab and then at that stage the switch starts to drop off probably have another one which i have up on this side as well give me a little screw it over there and we'll pop with a pop out i can oh now she goes right well that was as easy as I got, okay, ignition switch out. Better make sure and verify that we are 100% the same. No, it looks to be pretty much the same. I see this little seal here, so I better make sure that there's either a seal stuck up on the steering column or something because it's not on that one. But anyway, okay, there's a Ignition switch off. This thing is not on my other switch, so I'd say we'll we'll run without. We'll be going without that, whatever it is. Okay, so that's only the switch removal. I'm gonna swap around and start putting it back. Hey guys, I don't know what this thing was, but as I said, it's not on our ignition switch, which is very genuine looking. So I'm going to um, take it off. I haven't a clue what it is. Never saw the, these things before, so she's going to one side and it's going back as it was okay the only other thing we have connected here the wires are coming down and onto the actual antenna or aerial for the immobilizer they're pretty they're generic as in they're that's just going to be getting the power it's not coded or any of that kind of crack or tied into an immobilizer it just needs to be electrified to send an electromagnetic magnetic signal out to the key to get a signal back from the immobilizer chip so we're going to plug out these wires here and plug them into that and then we're what do i do guys then on these shear bolts when i'm putting them back together i just put a little cut focus a little cut across them and i run them in with a flat screw to work, okay so i do on it okay shear bolts in and up we're gonna go gee creakers creakers i was going the wrong way around okay sizing so up this thing and I'm not going to connect on my external block connectors as of yet but it should all go back up relatively easy that's it that's the base plate put on and outside block connectors back on okay right so that is that our little size 8 Torques back in the front and maybe I'll drive in a couple of bolts then in here into the steering column itself. Well, that's just a wrap in, I get the torque settings there in a minute and set it with a torque ratchet. Okay? For now, it's gonna close it up. Okay, this bit of plastic is heading in there. Uh, one bolt tight here, one that was down the bottom done here. The four bolts in the steering column, guys, you're going to ask me what the, the torque settings are for. It's uh, 45 Newton meters plus 90 degrees on these four bolts holding up the steering column, okay? Um, keep going, I'm going to put on my plastic cowling around the steering column here first and then put on my steering wheel, steering wheel and my airbag. 
Okay guys, all the bits of plastic are hidden in and bolted in and put back together. We've got the plastics on the top, it's plastic down the bottom. All starting to look apart. Steering wheel heading up and on. Watch that little again if it will focus, which it will. The little tab there where just to show that it lines up again and matches up okay is it that's that get our bolt in it talk that up to you and putting in my airbag i didn't want it actually zoomed in that far apologies i'm putting in your airbag leave it hang you would hang out like this feed in your little wiring and then give it a little a little push that click was it sitting back into place okay up they go again and all we have to do now is tighten the little bolts here and et voila he says okay we're sticking these bolts okay guys that is it squares up i did cycle the key with the airbag off someone asked me did it work and i just put in the key to make sure it turned um so maybe we may have an airbag light on but she should in theory go off up and running yeah we have well esp fault that we see both here and over here i did see i don't know maybe i didn't see an airbag fault. if you cycle turn the steering wheel all the way to one side <coughs> then all the way back then all the way we back again or even start moving in theory what should happen is our light our ESP lights are going to move should go off so fingers crossed I'll give her a drive we might need to clear faults if it's at the cop and the cop and is changing this thing Usually that would uh, reset straight away you now, but to look, if it doesn't there, we'll give it a, a fast clear. Just to mention on editing this video, if you have a traction, traction control light as in a car with little skid marks on the end of it, and or the little steering wheel in orange, and you can't get them to go out and re-adaptations and re don't um, work, or your end stop where you spin the wheel to one side and back to the other side and wait for four or five seconds, if that doesn't work, um, and every, it's just, if everything is right now and you haven't damaged anything, drive the car for a couple of miles. Even if you haven't got power steer and drive it for a couple of miles and after about five, six minutes maybe or so of driving, lock in each way, one side, the other side, straight, do a couple of full circles around where you can now, where it's safe. That will, in theory, make the car get happy. Once everything's right, get happy with where it's standing and get rid of those traction control lights and stuff, okay? That's what I've seen on a couple of occasions with these Audis. Even if you try doing adaptations or uh, end point resets, whatever you want to do, whether it's with VCDS or generic scan tools, sometimes they don't go away unless you actually bring it off for a spin. Okay, just what I've seen. Guys, talk to you next cartoon. And that is it. Change on the ignition switch on a 2010 Audi A3. Uh, please like and subscribe if any of my hints and tips or of any good benefit to you. Um, that's kind of it. Peter Kennedy, signing out. Guys, talk to you next cartoon and uh, thanks for watching.